Hi, this is Kamos Tech WDAC XLR. It's a compact high performance audio DA converter. In this video, I'm going to explain what is a DAC and then go through the features, connections, and controls of this board. Then we can have a look at the system requirements when connecting to other boards. Then we check the main components, and as it's a semi open design, we'll have a brief schematic walkthrough. Okay, so what is a DAC? It converts digital signal to analog. Here we focus on audio DACs where we have IC level PCM or DSD signal coming in and the output is analog single ended or differential signal. These days we can get the PCM or DSD signal directly from a USB module where it comes asynchronously from a computer and traditionally we've been getting from the SPDIF stream which is used commonly in consumer electronics. And we also need a power supply and a control. This what we see here is now a complete standalone DAC. But here we focus on this uh, converter part. So in the converter, the analog output, it can be voltage or current. And if it is a current output, we need an IV current to voltage conversion. And if it's differential output, we also need a differential stage or fully differential amplifier, depending if the outputs are RCA or XLR. To this output stage, we also integrate low pass filter to get rid of high frequency components from the DA conversion. And this what we see here now is a, a generic kind of low level DAC. And this is also what this WDAC XLR is, except we don't have the IV conversion because it's a voltage out DAC. This DAC is available in two different variants. It's the same PCB, but slightly different BOM. So the hardware version is the easy as plug and play as a DAC like this can be. So you just connect the I2S signals. No configuration is needed. Another option is I2C mode, and this is the only mode that supports DSD. So the hardware version does not support DSD. That's a limitation of the DAC IC itself. So I, with I2C version, you need a microcontroller or other I2C host to program the configuration. If you look at the PCB, here we have the UFL connectors for all the clocks and digital audio. So this is either DSD or I2S signals in. This pin header jumper leak, you can select a digital filter. This is a power supply connector. Then we have I2C for the I2C version of this board. And then the audio XLR outputs. On the bottom side, we have quite some information here on the silk screen. And there is an output mute relay and some unused uh, component placeholders here as well. A board like this is only one part of building the whole DAC, so in addition you need at least a power supply and something that feeds the I2S or DSD signals to this DAC. For easy power connectivity you can use one of our power supplies like this one for all USB supply. For getting the signals, if you want SPDIF signals, you can use something like our DAR18, which is an SPDIF to I2S board or you can use USB to I2S or DSD modules like this Jail Sounds module or the Mini DSP MC8 streamer. To help connecting the USB modules, we have some accessories. Like if you're using this MC8 streamer, we have um, a buffer add-on making it easy to connect the UFL cables straight from this to the dock or we have these small UFL to pin header adapters you can use to connect to any port if as long as there is adjacent ground pins with the signal pins. So for example, if you want SPDIF to balance output dock, the whole system would look something like this. Let's place the UFL cables for the I2S signals. Always have four signals, it's master clock, bit clock, water clock and data they must be in sync so it means that the master clock must come from the same source as the rest of the clocks okay now we have the signals connected then we need power i'll just put it here in the middle because i have to sort cables here you can get longer power cables as well 
DR18 uses just a small one for just digital supply. And then for the DAC, you would use the six pin cable for four different supplies here. Of course, now the board is going everywhere because nothing holding them. But then you would just connect a USB input for the power input for the 140 power supply and you're all set up. As the PCB is compact, we don't have space for large components. So we just have here a little bit of power supply filtering and protection. Um, this one here is mostly the, the mute circuit and some control. Uh, here is the dock in the middle and the dock reference is right channel, left channel. Then we have the first op-om stage with um, second order Lobos filter. Then we have the fully differential output stage with another filtering stage. So that makes the overall filter third order Lobos bezel filter. Okay, let's look at the schematics. I won't go through all the details of it, but just go through it fairly quickly, showing the main components, the main blocks. This is the main sheet, so you basically see the block diagram here. So the DAC IC is in the middle, here we have the decoupling for the references, for the other DAC supplies. These are the UFL connectors, the input signals coming in the DAC. Then we have the analog outputs going to the output stage. Here are some resistors that are setting the operating mode of the DAC, some control signals and control headers and power supply components are here. So if you look at the, the signal flow first, so I2S or DSD signal coming in here, going to the DAC, coming out as four analog signals because it's differential voltage output, one volt RMS per output going to the output stage. So we have two op-amp stages. Here is the one stage with filtering. Here is another one. And then we have the outputs, output connectors with some protection and filtering. The signal coming in is a one volt AC signal with 2.2 or something volts DC offset. Here we have a sullen key second order filter, low pass filter. And then this one is the fully differential stage that removes the DC offset and adds another filter stage. So this whole thing together becomes a third order bezel low pass filter at around 100 kilohertz with 6 dB gain. If you want to change the gain, these resistors here set the gain. So it's 500 ohms now with this 1K 6 dB. If you remove one of the 1K resistor per side, you would get zero dB output, which means two volt output signal while the default is four volts. Or if you add one more 1K resistor in one of these and these, you get six volt outputs, which I have done as well. These extra components here are not populated, not used. It was an attenuation relay used in the previous version of the WDAC, but it just didn't provide the improvement here, so it's not used. And the output, so we have the XLR connector, some filtering, protection, and this one here is a mute relay, so it, it shorts the two outputs together when the mute is on. And the other channel is the same. If we go back to the root sheet and then we can have a look at the power supply. This is the Molex connector where all the four supplies are coming in. Then we have a little bit of filtering and protection here for each supply. And the VD supply, which is five volts digital, it's coming into these two LDOs. So this one here is the digital supply, 3.3 volts. And then we have another LDO for the clock interface supply, which is the same 3.3. The critical supplies are two reference supplies. We have separate LDO for left and right channel. It's the uh, state-of-the-art analog devices, LT3042, uh, very, very low noise LDO. And more on the supplies. So next to the DAC, we see so these capacitors here, they're the reference decoupling 
I use the small ceramic capacitors. Some people use large uh, electrolytics or tantalums here. I've tried them as well. They work sometimes fine. These are sensitive nodes and I found this combination of these capacitors to work, but it's I said it's sensitive. The values and the locations of the capacitors are critical. Changing them a little bit may drop the performance a few dB, but using what it is, it is consistent. These resistors here, they set the hardware or I2C mode. And then if you go to control, it looks a bit complicated because it's two variants of hardware and I2C. They use slightly different components here. But basically, this is the mute circuit here, the output mute. It is a simple supply monitor, so the VD and the VPVN needs to be up that the mute to release. And then coming into the mute circuit, we have basically a logic OR of three different signals. So there's the external mute in, but you can use to mute the output. And then there is from a startup delay is one input coming. And then you can also manually control the mute in the I2C version with the with I2C commands. So this one here is a I2C IO expander. It's not used a lot here now. It's just controlling the, the mute and the startup because the attenuation relay is not used anymore. And then we have some various resistors here, pull-ups for the I2C and setting the address or the operating mode in a hardware variant. And this one here is the jumper link selection for the digital filter in the hardware variant. And uh, we just have a logic IC here to code uh, the jumper link selection to the filter selection lines. That's pretty much it, very briefly. If you have any questions, just drop a comment. Let's do a small performance demo. So here we have the WDAC. It is connected to PC. So this is a signal generator here. SPDIF coming to DAR18, which is my SPDIF receiver. And then it's the UFL cables coming to the DAC. And then we have XLR cables going to Cosmos ADC, which is used for the measurements. And everything is powered up by this one for all power supply. Here we have Verton's multi instrument software, what I use for measurements at home. It's a spectrum analyzer view. And if you put the signal generator on, it's 997 hertz minus 1 dBFS. So here we see the fundamental around 1 kilohertz, the harmonics. We, we cannot measure noise floor directly with this. We would need to um, use an amplifier and measure it separately. But the noise floor of this DAC is 122 dB A weighted. If we scale this fundamental, we can see the harmonics relative to the fundamental, which is now at zero. So we are at almost minus 130 dB. Here is the total THD minus 125. THD plus N is minus 115. The THD plus N figure here is a little bit worse than it is if I measure with APX at my work. Even if the THD is really good here, it's just because the, the noise floor increases very slightly how it's measured here. Overall, I state the typical performance figure, so I don't guarantee any performance for practical reasons. The same way if you take a duck chip, it's actually not guaranteed for any figure. It's just a typical or the minimum may be a lot, lot worse than that. But I can say that the performance of these is has been very consistent over the boards I have tested. And that's all. Thank you for watching.